Good morning. morning. We're going to start off with some hallelujahs. Did God wake you up this morning? Are we going to give God the praise, the honor, and glory that only he deserves? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for loving and blessing us. Welcome to Forest Heights Baptist Church. Those on Zoom, those on YouTube, those on the telephone, and those here in the sanctuary, we welcome you. Do we have any visitors today? Where are you from, sir? Oh, nice to meet you. And you ladies, you're here to support the pastor, yes. Well, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. And next time you come, don't raise your hand because you're family. Okay. <laughs> All right, with just a few announcements, we have the um, Annie Armstrong Easter offering is still going on, as well as the collection for the Easter egg hunt. We got to purchase eggs and candy. And this is not about an Easter bunny. After they do the Easter egg hunt, they learn the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. No Easter bunnies in here. <laughs> the WMU will meet today after service. The deacons will meet next Sunday after service. And that's it for now as far as announcements. Everyone have a safe and blessed week. Good morning again, and welcome this morning to all that are going, that have assembled here this morning. Our uh, call of script, our call of worship scripture is going to be from the book of Matthews, and as we uh, did our uh, Sunday school lesson today, I chose this scripture, these scripts, these verses, the uh, scriptures, because of. Uh, what I learned in our Sunday school lesson. And being blessed doesn't mean that you have to have the things of this world in which the way the world thinks of being blessed. For instance, just because you ride around in a big car, shiny car, just because you have a big house or a small house, doesn't mean that you're blessed in that way. What it means that you're blessed by having the by having the mind of Christ in the way God sees blessings. We think of being blessed as being though being we're well and what have you, but it doesn't mean that all the time. It means that being well with Christ and having a relationship with Christ, amen? So my scripture is gonna come from the book of Matthews and it talks about coming from the Beatitudes and listen to what it says. And seeing the multitude, chapter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11 to 12 as well. The Beatitudes. And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, he's teaching his disciples, you and I are his disciples as well. Going to verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall be God, see gods, excuse me. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 11. Blessed are those when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Amen. May it be a blessing on the reading and hearing of God's word. And it's in red, so it's not my sin. It's Jesus' sin. Amen. Let's bow our heads for the prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, as we come today, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Beatitudes, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for those that are poor in spirit, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for those that mourn, dear Heavenly Father. But we also know, dear Heavenly Father, in your word, dear Heavenly, we, Father, we are to love, dear Heavenly Father, in spite of what the secular world says, in spite of the decisions that are made in, in our Congress, dear Heavenly Father, on Capitol Hill, Heavenly Father, we are to love, dear Heavenly Father. For our, our Creator was about love, dear Heavenly Father. So as we come, dear Heavenly Father, we look at one another, dear Heavenly Father, and we're able to say to one another here this morning that we love you, meaning it from the heart as well, dear Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, Heavenly Father, we want to pray for our sick, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you put a healing hand in that direction, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that your will be done. We also come, dear Heavenly Father, praying for the preacher who's going to deliver your message today, dear Heavenly Father. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you touch him from his head to his toe, dear Heavenly Father, that you place the flush behind the cross, dear Heavenly Father, and let your spirit come forth, dear Heavenly Father. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Forest Heights. If you would please join us in this morning's opening hymn. Found on page 64, how many of you know this morning that God will take care of you? Amen. If you would, please stand and join us again. Page 64, God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will. God will take care of you through every day or all, all the way. God, he will take care of you. God will take care of you through days of toil when heart doth fail god will take care of you when danger is your path assail god will take care of you god will Take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breath. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. Or all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Thank you. You may be seated. Now is our time during this service when we prepare our offerings unto the Lord, and we're reminded with our song that you can't beat God giving 
no matter how hard you try. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Thank you for blessing our giving. And we speak abundance in God for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give 
to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that i am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee how can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude and that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done just let me live my life let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With his blood, come on if you know it this morning, blood he has saved me with his power, with his power, he has raised, he has raised to God to be the glory, glory for the thing done to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory
Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. We want to give honor and thanks to this wonderful church and all the officers and leaders of Forest Heights Baptist Church. I greet you with Jesus' joy. We're so excited. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in our mouths. And we're so grateful to God just to be here, be able to share the word of God. So thankful. Every time I walk in this place, I remember when I used to serve with Bishop Muse, and you guys opened up the doors when we had some plumbing problems right there. It's the Audis now. It used to be the Arkansas Safety Christian Church right on the corner. And you guys opened up your doors and was so gracious to us to allow us to use the facility doing our midweek service, and we're so grateful to that. Every time I walk in the doors, I remember that. Because you don't have to be kind. Um, my mother taught me a long time ago, um, it's important to be nice, but it's, um, it's more important. I mean, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And so to be uh, kind and generous and loving is the attitude of Jesus Christ. Above all, he's given us a commandment to love that God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Not going to hold you along. I just want to take about three and a quarter seconds and give God your best praise just because you woke up this morning. Amen. 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 Just, because you, just because you woke up. That's enough to be thankful for. And not only, not only did you get up, some, I mean, woke up, some of you were able to get up and to feed yourself and walk into the house of God. That's a blessing. Yeah. Amen. To have the activities of your limbs. I'm old school. I come from the old Baptist church. They say the activity of your limbs and your blood still running warm. Some of y'all was raised just like me. Still running warm in your veins. Again, to all of the officers, all the leaders, the deacons, all of uh, those of you that, that serve in ministry to make um, the ministry operate and run for the kingdom of God. I salute you, all the preachers and um, all of the particular persons that are in their perspective places. We are grateful for you. Now, um, the most important person other than Jesus in my life, I want to honor her, and that's my lovely wife on the front row. Amen. She is the neck that keeps my head turning. Amen. So I'm grateful for my lovely queen. And also, we have some staff with us today, um, the wives, the couple. And we're so grateful for you for coming out and um, driving us here this morning. We're so grateful to God. Amen. <laughs> it's good to have people that will serve in ministry. And I greet you from Liberty House International Ministries, where the senior pastor has been pastoring there 18 years. And we have um, extremely leaders and pastors there. We oversight, oversee them to function the ministry properly. They don't need me there. They know how to work ministry. Can you say amen? I come in and preach the gospel, cast the vision, and I'm gone. The people of God works the ministry. That's what the five-fold ministry in 411 is supposed to do. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the edifying of the body of the Christ and to equip them to do the work of the ministry, visit the hospitals, the institutions, jails, institutions, that the kingdom of God may continue to grow. I'm not going to hold you long, um, but I do have a word from the Lord. I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to be strong. Is that all right? Y'all going to pray with me? Now, I promise you, if you say amen to me uh, at least 10 times, I'll have you out of here by tomorrow morning. <laughs> amen. Amen. So I'm grateful to God. How many of you love the word of God? Well, I'm going to say this, and I want you all to be excited. Good morning, Forest Heights. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I'm a provoking preacher. I'm an animated, I'm an excited preacher because I love Jesus. Amen. Because he saved me. He delivered me. He brought me out of bondage, gave me a word of victory that if he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. Have anybody been struggling this week with anything, any issues at all? Am I the only one? 
Amen. I know y'all don't, if you're sitting beside your wife, you probably don't want to say nothing. I understand. <laughs> but God is still faithful. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still faithful to cover us and love us. And we can't get caught up with petty little things that don't amount to anything. If it's not about eternity, it's small. Right? I was taught a long time ago, there's two rules in life. Number one, don't sweat the small stuff. Right? And number two, it's all the small stuff. <laughs> right? And so you live a stress-free life. We, we don't want to be Christians and be mad and, and mean and nasty and religious and hateful. We're supposed to be loving people, kind people, right? Jesus was pleasant. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad I'm sitting beside you this morning. Tell them, don't treat me bad because I may be your answer to your problem. Now give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Come on. <laughs> you never know who you come to church to sit beside. That's why... Um, our church, our pastor, and we have a pretty large congregation. I said, you have to make sure when you come into the house of God, you sit in the right section or you sit beside the right people. Amen. You don't want to sit beside somebody that look unhappy to remind you what you just left. You got to get around somebody that's excited, that has some joy, that don't mind standing up and saying, thank you, Jesus. Because if it had not been for the Lord, I wish I had some witness. You gonna make me preach. Don't you do that. Don't, don't you do that. And so it's important that you, you know, you get in the right section, get around the right people that's excited. And that's how it is in life. You know, because spirits and personalities can, can rub off on you. Right? Before you know it, you came in happy, you sit beside somebody disgruntled, and you walk out of here with a headache. Can you say amen? You ought to come to the house of God and leave feeling better than you came in, right? You're supposed to come in, get researched, restored, rejuvenated. You're supposed to leave there hype. The old preacher, the old Baptist preacher said, you ought to leave church feeling like you can ready to charge hell with a water pistol. And I'm like, man, what are you talking about? He's just saying simply, you ought to feel excited about going to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? When we come in on Sunday morning, it's like a huddle. We come in, we huddle, we get the play, we get the word of God. Then we go out and operate ministry, right? Jesus says before he ascended unto heaven, he says, go ye into all of the world, right? And preach the gospel to every creature. That word gospel or that word world rather, it means go where people are. Wherever they are, in the grocery store, I don't care wherever you are. One time I was so I was so fired up when I got saved early on when I got saved. I, I want everybody to know Jesus. Anybody was like me? Y'all can't remember that long. But when I got saved, I was excited, man. I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. I was at the stoplight, got out my car. And said, hey, Jesus, love you. They thought I was crazy. I was crazy. I was, I was crazy for Jesus because I was so grateful to be saved. And, um, and God changed my life. Y'all ready for the word? All right. I already preached about five minutes already. So give me about 10 more minutes and we'll be done. All right. Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five. This is going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm going to teach my little study school class and I'm going to get on out of here. All right. This is going to be really, really good. I hope you're excited about the word of God. Look at somebody and tell them, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. All right. Um, I'm going to read one verse out of this whole novella, this pericope, this passage of scripture in Luke chapter 5. I'm going to read one verse in verse 5. Come on, stand with me if you're ready. If you're able, if you got feet, you're able, you got strong ankles, stand with me in concert, in symphony. In unity, the Bible says when they read the word of God in Ezra, the people stood. And the word of God was so powerful, they even cried. Amen. And Simon answering said to him, Master, we have toiled or labored or worked all the night and have taken nothing. We came up short. Oh, that wasn't in there. Yes, it was. We have taken nothing. Nevertheless, shout that real loud. Nevertheless, Nevertheless. 
Thy word, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now, now remain standing. If, if your neighbor don't scream and holler and shout and give God praise, I don't want you to talk to them for the rest of 2024. Now, I want you to be beside them. I want you to watch them good because you need people in this season that can agree with you, that's excited when they hear the word of God, and they can agree with you. You don't need nobody like, oh, no, whatever. No, you need somebody excited. Right? So make sure when you look at them, they don't shout. I'm going to give you permission to put up your little finger. You know how we used to do back in the church? And go on the other side of the church. Now, watch. I want you to watch them. Mama, I want you to turn around and see if they shout. If they don't shout, I don't want you to talk to them. The rest of 2024. All right, here's your sermon title. I want you to holler. Try it again. Come on now. Come on. Try it again. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Help us get this word out. And we give you praise. Amen. Be seated and say, try it again. I thank God that you have tried it again. It ain't over yet. Can you tell somebody, it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. We're living in a day where failure has a proclivity to sort of cripple us. Failure. But I have a word for my praisers this morning. Any praisers in here this morning? Praisers. I have a word for our praisers that your failure is not final. Failure is not final. You don't have to stay where you are. You have a choice. Tell somebody one more time. I, lay, I, I always often get people involved in service because I don't want nobody to get to sleeping on me. And I know when you're talking, you ain't going to fall asleep, right? Amen. So tell somebody, I have options. I have options. I have options. I have options. When you read this text, these disciples, they were professional fishermen, and they were out all night long fishing. They knew how to fish. They knew where to fish. They were uh, absolutely professional in their trade. But they found themselves that night, and they didn't catch nothing. They came up empty. The text says they labored, they toiled, they worked hard all night long, and they caught nothing. In this passage, in verse 2, the Bible says that they were washing their nets. Washing their nets. They were washing their nets. Washing their nets is an indication that I'm quitting. I'm, I'm done. They were washing their nets. They threw in the towel. They say, I'm not doing this no more. I've done all I can do with this marriage. I've done all I can do with these children. This job is getting on my nerve. The church is getting, uh, uh, I ain't going to say that. The church, people at the church get on my, I'm washing my nets. You, you'd be surprised how many people are in this room. They look good. They look pious. They look educated. They look like they got it all together. They look like they going somewhere. They look like they love God. They look strong. They look powerful. But underneath all of that facade, they are washing the nets. You'd be surprised. At the morning table, we eating marmalade with toast. We drinking our coffee with our orange juice. We got our legs crossed. And sometimes in the winter, the fireplace is in the kitchen. You're living so good. But beneath all of that, you're washing Yes. Have you ever been there when life can get you so down that quitting looks like an option? I just stopped out here to tell the 15 of y'all, I make 16 of you to hang on in there. You're this close to your greatest miracle you ever had in your life. You know when you're real close, I said this in the car coming, you know when you're real close, Reverend, you're real close when the devil gets busy in your life. You know when God is about to do something great when all hell breaks loose in your life. When trouble comes from out of the woodwork. Anybody ever been there? You just woke up, you get a phone call. Let me just tell you this really quickly. I'm going to push this in the, in the envelope really quickly. Uh, I don't care who you are, trouble show up at your house. Have I got a witness there? You can have more degrees than a the thermometer, but trouble will show up at your house. And sometimes trouble will make you want to wash your nets, make you want to throw in a towel, make you want to quit, make you want to retreat, make you want to cave in, make you want to give up and say, listen, this is not worth it. Let me tell you something. Anything you go through in life, if you don't have no struggle, it won't be worth it at the end. 
But you got to hang on in there. The text says that they, they toiled all night and they were washing their necks. The first thing I want to share with you in this text, it was a night of struggle. It's right there in the text. It says, I have court nothing. They court nothing. Verse 5, it says, And Simon answering said to them, Master, we have taught all night, but I've taken nothing. It was a night of struggle. I can testify. I'm not I'm that young and I'm not that old, but I'll be 59 um, this year. But I've had some nights of struggle. Some nights when you had to walk the floor all night long. Because I had to deal with that crazy boss in the morning, y'all. I'm going over here, y'all not talking. Hey, man. I, had some, I had some nights. I told you I'm a provoking preacher. Preaching is a call and response. You know, when you're on the phone talking to somebody and they ain't talking back to you, I'm ready to hang up. Hey, Amen. If I say I'm going to the store, I want you to say what you're going to get. If I'm going to get some candy, I want you to say bring some apples back with you too. It's a conversation. It's a call and a response. That's why I teach our preachers. I teach our preachers. I teach ministerial alliances. And I teach preachers all over the world. You can't practice preaching because you can't talk back to yourself. You know, when you try to prepare a sermon and you try to, you know, you write your point down and you say in, in, in the notes, oh, man, they're going to like that. Right? Then you get and say it and don't nobody say nothing. And it throws you all. You understand? So you can't practice preaching. You just got to be in it. It's like a plumber. You have to put your hands in it. You got to be in it for a while. I've been preaching for 25 years. And I'm a provoking preacher. I tell the people, it, it, don't, if you're going to stand and say something, if you're not talking, you're stalking. Amen. That, I like that mother over there. She's clapping her hand. Thank God for you, mother. <laughs> Glory to God. So all of us, if you get on, has had some nights of struggle, right? All of us went with some stuff, you know, if, if you're saved and you love God and you're doing the right thing, you shall suffer persecution. The Bible tells us that. Amen. And so don't think because you are uh, living right and you're living holy and you're loving people that you'll never encounter nights of struggle. Amen. Your kids, can I get a witness, will get on your heart and on your nerve. Come on, say amen. Yeah, they make you pray. Won't they make you pray? I know I made my mother pray. Glory be to God. I was born and raised right here in the DMV. And I didn't always look this good. Don't I look good? I mean, I had my young age, man. When I was, man, I was so bad. I was so bad. God saved me. He, when he saved me, God saved me. I was so bad, I would steal your money. It didn't help you look for it. But God saved me, man. I got strung out on crack cocaine. Amen. But I've been drug free for 30 years. See, I'm not afraid to tell my story because if, if you've never been nowhere, you can't take nobody nowhere. And some of you trying to look at me like you better than me, you just ain't get caught. God saved you. He delivered you. So, you know, I got strung out on marijuana as a young kid in the area. And, and got strung out on cocaine, went to college, and, and just got caught up in that stuff. But God delivered me. God brought me up. You know what he told me? He told me, the Lord told me, he said, son, watch this. It's going to mess some of your theology up because God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. He said, son, I, I, I allowed you to go through that addiction so I can pull you out. Listen, so I can put you back in to pull somebody else out. God, did y'all get that? And so God will carry you through some stuff, some situations and some pressures. Can you look at your neighbor and say, your go-through ain't for you? My wife looking at me, she said, be careful. Don't be so hard. Don't be so, don't tell them everything. Don't tell them everything. <laughs> See, it, it's easy for me to tell you how many degrees I have, because I do have degrees. I'm educated. You know, I went to the Washington Bible Seminary. I got my degree in religious education. I'm educated. But Paul was educated. But Paul killed Christians. And you know, they wasn't going to let Paul in the church. That's called Paul was executing Christians. Watch this. And thought, mother, that he was doing God a favor. Yeah. Until he got on the road to Damascus. He was killing Christians. He was notorious. And thought God, he was doing God a favor. And the church didn't want Paul. Because Paul had a reputation. Isn't it amazing how your reputation... Can, can, can eliminate you from the progress of God? 
But thank God he had somebody to vouch and say, Paul ain't the same. Had they got rid of Paul, they would have got rid of their greatest ally of the church. I'm talking about Paul who wrote Galatians, Ephesians, um, Colossians, who, who wrote a third of the New Testament was persecuting the church. And so we get in church and we try to act like we so flossy. We did everything right. We never looked at a man. We never looked at a woman. We never lied. We just been holy all of our life. You know that's not the truth. But his grace, that's what Paul said, is sufficient. He says, I'd rather glory in my infirmities, right? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. He said, I can tell you, yeah, I've been circumcised on the eighth day. I'm from, and that ain't a good testimony anyway, to circumcise on the eighth day. But that's what he said. Go read your Bible. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Um, concerning the law, I'm zealous. Paul had a resume that would blow your mind. I mean, he had a resume that would blow your mind. But he said, I've done some things in ignorance. And God forgave me. God graced me. And so we have to learn how to get honest and, and be transparent, especially if the church is going to grow, you have to get to your young people. Amen. You got to get to these young people because eventually, y'all, everybody in here has a destiny to the dust. You got to date with the dust. And if we don't be transparent and be honest with this new generation, they're going to be lost and don't going to want to know our God. So we got to let them know, baby, yeah, I've been through this. I've done this. We can't just try to let them um, think that everything we did was right. Amen. Let me say this, and I'm almost done. You know a good preacher closed three times, right? It's almost ten minutes. Listen, we can't tell the young people that it's going to mess y'all up. You can't tell the young people ain't nothing out there. You can't. It's a lot out there. And let me say this. Let me get honest. Listen, when I was out there sinning, I enjoyed it. I'm going over here. Y'all not even talking on the front row. You didn't enjoy it, but sin, the Bible says, listen, listen, the Bible says sin was pleasurable for a moment, right, until you cross that line. I cannot tell you I didn't enjoy myself. Anybody enjoy this stuff when it was out there? Am I by myself? Oh, you was at the club dancing and you ain't had no fun. Come on now. It was pleasurable. So you can't tell the children. You got to tell them. There's a, you got to tell the young people. There's a way that seemeth right to man, but at the end lead it to destruction and death. You can't tell me ain't nothing out there. There's a lot out there. And so we got to be honest and transparent. See, it's not a season in the church globally, worldwide. It's not a season to be deep. It's a season to be relevant, right? Because our young people, if we're not careful, don't want anything to do with the church. Amen. And so we have to throw the line out. We have to get out of here and be transparent and open our lives up to reach them. That's why God took you through some of that stuff. But you got to get honest. Y'all remember, every, every Ruth need a Naomi. Amen. And, and so, so that they can share with the young woman where they were, what they did, and be honest, you know. Um, I, I had a baby out of wedlock. You got to be honest with them. I've done this. I've done that. I've, I put up with stuff I shouldn't have been putting up with. But God graced me, and that's how we reach the next generation. And so we have to be able to do that. We have to have a zeal. We have to have uh, a, a, a motivation, inspiration to be able to, to go beyond ourselves and reach them. So all of us had a night of struggle. Amen. I got five minutes, and I'm going to put this, 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 this court in the paint. And I'm gonna get you out of here. These men, they were they were experts. They were professional fishermen in the text. I was led to share that with y'all because sometimes, here it is. I um I um uh, I don't study to preach. I study to know God. I listen to preach. Because I can have a sermon I prepared, right? And it doesn't meet this audience. Right? So I'm trying to make sure that I be relevant that we can be charged enough to understand after we leave here, we got work to do, right? 
right? Forest Heights is still building the kingdom of God, right? We still excited about preaching the gospel, building the kingdom. Uh, let me ask you a question. I'm going to get honest with you, right? I'm going to get honest with you. Do you want your church packed out? Yes. Let me see your hands. Do you want your church? I, listen, I don't know no organization that don't want it packed out. I don't know a movie theater that doesn't want it to be full. I don't know a football stadium who doesn't want it to be full. God wants his house full, right? And the only way it's going to get full, we got to get out of the building, evangelize, bring them back in, discipleship, duplicate, then God will get some glory. Am I talking to the right church? Right? And so that's what the ministry is. If we're not evangelizing, the church die. I teach that. I've learned evangelism right here on this corner, right here at the Aldi's. The Aldi's now, right? It was an ark of safety. And I came up Baptist. I was just Baptist. I, I graduated from the Washington Baptist Theological Seminary, right, in Washington, D.C. It's not even there no more. It was on 13th Street back there I, with Dr. Fowler. And, 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 and so I, I knew about theology. I knew about doctrine. I knew protocol. I learned all of that. But I really didn't get the ministry till I got on that corner with Bishop Muse. And I learned ministries about souls. Right? That little, that little, um, that little, I don't know why I'm going here, but the Lord is leading me here. Y'all bear with me. Um, the Lord is leading me to be honest and transparent with you. Because you, you guys been in, in the word of God for many years. All of you know this text. Yeah. Right? So now I got to be relevant. I'm a bishop. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an apostle. I, I push. I, I cast vision. I'm a seer. That gas station right across the street, I made that a, like a, a um, uh, uh, evangelism headquarters. We used to go there and talk to people pumping gas. And they would give their life to Jesus while they was pumping gas. Then I pointed to the church. And then they'd come to the church and get disciple. And before you know it, they were out there talking to people pumping gas. And before you know it, you look up, the church is full. And people are getting saved. Young people are getting saved. They're getting excited. We're not compromising the gospel. Can I preach this and y'all promise me you're going to shop? This is a Baptist church, right? He died. Didn't he die? Yeah. Right? The Baptist, the Baptist, we get excited over he, he died, right? I'm going to say it one more time. If y'all don't holler, I ain't never coming back to Forest Heights. I said he died. Didn't he die? Yeah. I thought I was at the church. When we hear that, we ought to get excited. But that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. With what, y'all? All power in his hand. And now he's on the right hand of the Father forever living to make intercession. But here's the blessed hope. Now, if y'all, I'm telling you, if y'all don't shout, Mama, if you don't shout over this one, I ain't going to give you no more hugs the next year. Here's the shout. Now, First Lady, don't let me be out here by myself. Now, if no nobody shout, the First Lady ought to shout with the pastor. Right? Now, I know, man, you some knows him. You better shout. You better not sit there and look like you don't know what I'm talking about. He's coming back again. Yeah. That's the excitement about God. You got to get excited. You ain't going to tell nobody about Jesus if you don't love him. Y'all remember uh, uh, when you were young couples? I love this couple right here. I love y'all. When y'all was young, y'all couldn't stop talking about each other. Oh, man, he took me out. He was so nice. Right? When, you, when you're young in your relationship, you can't stop talking. That's how I ought to be about Jesus. When was the last time? I didn't say nothing about my text. I got, I'm all the way out here now. I might as well stay out here. When was the last time you, you, you shared your faith with somebody? And, and that, that ain't a question I want you to ask. That was, you know, that was just a question I want you to partner in your heart. When was the last time you just pulled somebody up in your neighborhood? How you doing? Jesus loves you. He died for you. Would you receive him today? That's the job of the church. You know, the government, they have youth programs. The government will feed the hungry. The government will have senior programs. They will give you money to do all that. But the government is not going to preach Jesus. That's the church's job. The church's function is to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the command that Jesus gave the church. Before he ascended, his last words to his disciples were, Go ye into all of the world and preach the gospel. 
to every creature. If we're not doing that, we're just coming in here as a club and we're just coming and sitting and preaching to one another and singing to one another every week and every hour. We, we have to equip. That's what the Ephesians says. Equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. What is the ministry? Preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. When you when you in the group, man, listen, I I I'd be I'd be sitting at and eating dinner with my wife and a waiter come over, a waitress come to me. I'm preaching to God, hey baby, Jesus love you. And 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 give her a tip bigger than what my food costs. Y'all catch that on y'all way back to IHOP today. And so that's what it's about. I'm done. I bless you. Let's give God praise. Come on. Now, I hope I didn't startle you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a preacher that tells the truth. And um, I want to invite you to, to join him, to be a part of him, to really get a relationship with Jesus Christ for yourself. Um, I know this wasn't your usual message. But I was led by the Holy Spirit to say some things that will challenge us. You, you need a man of God that will challenge us. Isn't that right? To make us want to do better. You ought not leave church every Sunday feeling fuzzy. Sometimes you ought to leave here feeling like, man, you know what? I got to go home. I got to get this one right. Jesus died for you. And we want to open up the doors of the church and offer salvation to those that may not even online, if you're watching online, you can type even in the comment section, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ, or I'm coming to Jesus, if you're online watching right now. Those of you in here, you may be already saved, but you need a church home. You need a, a, a fellowship of saints that's growing, that's loving, that's shopping each other, that's in the word of God, that's going somewhere, that has vision, that have expansion and growth and fruitfulness in mind that you can grow and be all that God wants you to be. It's never too late. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. The day that you hear my voice, heart not your heart. If that be you today, we want to offer you Christ. Would you come? Would you come? Well, let's give God praise. Everybody say this. Thank God. Amen. We're going to now have our benediction. I'm at the 12 o'clock hour. I'm not over time. Can you say amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Maybe you invite me back another time. He wasn't, he didn't go over time. Amen. He got he kind of was a crazy preacher, but he didn't go over time. Let's get ready to stand if you can and be dismissed. Glory be to God. Thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. And my prayer for you is that. God will send you everything that your heart desires, that you will have the right fits for your ministry, that we can continue to grow and, and affect this community and be a growing ministry that's loving God. So, Father, thank you for this time that we have shared. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will keep us in your care. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless with this presence, with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, and forever. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen one more time. Amen.
Shopping at the big box stores? Remember that Bray beats big up.